The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Ingenia Herbicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. I'm Werner Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. Every year, it seems more no-till soybean growers struggle to manage the crop residue produced by higher-yielding corn crops. What can growers do to better manage that trash and support their soybeans in a no-till system? We'll dive into that question today with Jake Monroe. He is a soil management specialist with OMAFRA, and he joins me now. Hi, Jake. Hey, great to have you on the Soybean School. Great to be with you, Bernard. Hey, now 2022 was a good year to learn about, you know, how no-till soybeans perform perform after a big crop. Um, We had a record Ontario corn crop in 2021, which created big crop residue. Um, We also had some tough harvest conditions, you know, produced a lot of compaction. Now, let's talk about your research and, you know, some of the work you did. You followed five no-till fields last year from planting to harvest. You know, what were you hoping to learn? Yeah, so Bernard, the conversation every every spring really kind of goes to, you know, the no-till soybeans, they look tough, you know, maybe early to mid-June, people are talking about, oh, you know, is that really, is that really the right approach for, for many acres of our soybeans in the province? And And then often you'll you know, later in the, in the season, you'll hear that, oh, those, you know, a lot of those fields turned out just fine. Uh, but I wanted to dig into that a little bit deeper. Like you say, 2021, you know, big corn crop, really wet fall and challenging conditions. And and I think there's more to the story than just, oh, the soybeans look tough at the beginning and they turn out, out all right in the end. So the idea was to follow five fields across uh, different counties in the province with some experienced no-tillers and dig into the details, see what worked well, what didn't, and then how those yields uh, turned out and how those fields fared in the end. So, Jake, give us a snapshot of some of those five fields that you followed. You know, what did you see? You know, what did you, what was happening in those fields? Yeah, so, again, five fields across a number of different counties in the province. And, you know, what they all had in common is these are growers who've been doing no-till or reduced tillage across all their crops for a number of years. I uh, wanted to get a sense across different soil types and in different regions with different weather uh, during the growing season. So a couple of sites in Huron County uh, near uh, Roxeter and Molesworth. Uh, these are uh, corn crops that were both north of 230 bushels per acre. These two fields, same growers uh, uh, planted on 15 inch row spacing. Um, and, you know, in those couple of fields, what we saw was, you know, some challenges in, in, in getting a good establishment, especially we had uh, soybeans anywhere close to those old uh, corn root, root balls. And uh, we we saw plant stands that were, you know, uh, marginal, um, so, you know, below 100,000 in one case. Uh, other field we had near Laura again, uh, 234 bushel per acre corn. In this case, we had... Uh, also, a soybean field that was planted uh, with a Kinsey no-till planter, 15-inch spacing, and we saw that we had, again, a stand that was about 100,000 uh, plants per acre seeded at 165. So we're we're seeing, you know, across these three fields, some challenges in establish, establishing a really strong stand. And the final two fields, one located uh, near Cambridge, Ontario, and that one was uh, the only one planted with a John Deere no-till drill, and that was a interesting one that stood out that was actually the lowest yielding corn but still 200 bushel per acre corn in 2021 and uh, harvested with a uh, with chopping corn head and just had a real challenge with that no-till drill establishing soybeans uniformly and and getting soybeans not only to depth but also closing that uh, seed slot and so that was our our poorest stand um, but still on pretty good soil and then finally we had a field that was close to caledonia still in Brant County on heavy uh, clay soil. This one again managed many years under no-till, uh, seeded with an air seeder uh, at a higher population, again, because it's on, on uh, heavier clay soil, seeded at 200,000. And that, that field just was nice from start to finish in terms of stand establishment, but a different approach, non, non-chopping corn head. And again, 
using an air seeder, whereas mostly their sites were with a planter. So a nice spread, lots of different conditions and, and things to learn. Mm. Now, from an overall perspective, uh, Jake, you know, how, do, how do these fields fare when it comes to you know, yield and profitability? Yeah, so again, some, some challenges in terms of establishment, kind of matching what we often hear in, in kind of that June time frame. At the end of the day, however, you know, these fields, they all came along quite nicely throughout the month of July uh, and then into August. And yields ranged from 50 bushels per acre up to 72 bushels per acre across these fields. So every single field that I followed was above the provincial average in 2022. And uh, we had, you know, a number in there that were in the 60s. Uh, profitability, one of our cooperators was generous enough to share his cost of production information. And that field it happened to be our high, highest yielding one at 72 bushels per acre. But with their cost of production, uh, there was a gross margin there or a return on that field of, of $800 per acre. Mm. Even with $12 per bushel beans, that still would have worked out to over $500 per acre. Wow, pretty solid stuff. Pretty solid stuff. Hey, um, want to talk about some of the things you, you, you've mentioned here. Um, you know, one of the things you noticed here, you know, you had four fields with plant stands less than 100,000 plants. What does that tell you? Yeah, so to me, Bernard, that was a bit of a warning sign. Um, you know, those the, those four fields were at or below 100,000 plants per acre, which, you know, we don't get too, too concerned about. We, we talk about that 100,000 on, on loam, loam type soils or lighter soils being out of that minimum. You certainly wouldn't replant. Um, but, you know, it's a warning sign in the sense that those fields are you know, at or below around 60% of the of the seeding rate. Um, so yeah, there were some issues with um, seed vigor and seed quality in 2022. So that might be part of what's at play. But what I observed was that in each of these fields, there were some, you know, significant issues in managing that corn residue and establishing good seed to soil contact. And, you know, in some cases, it resulted in uh, stands that were below 80,000, around 70,000. And so something to be addressed because as we're moving corn yields higher and higher, that's going to continue to be more of an issue with no-till soybeans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, I want to uh, you look at uh, some of the your finals, you know, your findings here, and uh, you summarize those in an article on Field Crop News. You noted know three key takeaways. Uh, let's finish up with those. Um, number one, use that higher seeding rate. Yeah, and that that recommendation also comes from our soybean special, specialist, Horace Bonner. Uh, you know, a 10 to 20% higher soybean seeding rate. And to me, what that means is that it gives you just that kind of buffer in terms of in terms of risk. If there is issue, an issue with, uh, in some cases, maybe seed quality or specifically with no-till, you know, with getting that seed to soil contact, just going to be enough to get you over that, um, you know, 100,000 mark to ensure you've got an adequate stand and not leave you with something that's, you know, 80,000 plants mm -hmm. break or marginal like that. Now you also talked about you know consider you know consider the planter instead of the drill. Yeah, and there's been great research done in Ontario on, on planters versus drills. And the big takeaway that I had with this case study is that if a if a chopping corn head's being used and that that residue is being you know cut up and kind of spread over the soil surface, that's where no-till drills kind of, kind of fall down a bit. And we saw that at one of our sites. Um, the, the research done by Bill Dean, Horst Bonner, and others found a you know five bushel advantage to a planter versus a drill when a chopping corn head is used. And, you know, that, that played out in the, in the site that we followed. Mm -hmm. And a final point, and, and, there, and there's lots more as well, but stay off those old corn rows. Absolutely. That's where we saw, it won't come as a surprise to anybody, but that's where we saw just really, really poor stands. And in some cases, that's what brought the average um, plant stand down on a couple of our fields. And so, you know, some issues with GPS in a couple of situations um, and just resulted in those 15 inch uh, row spacings getting shifted over slightly. And that had a big impact on stand. So, you know, ensuring that GPS operating as well as it can be, can really have a big impact on final stand. Mm. Well, I, everyone, there's a lot to this story. I encourage you all to check it out. The full article on field crop news. Um, hey, Jake, thanks for joining me. Always great to have you on the soybean school. Thanks so much for having me.